so much for that. It's good to be here this morning. Amen? Amen. An old pastor friend of mine told me a long time ago, he said, I'd rather be here than the finest hospital in the United States of America. And I can vouch for that. I am so glad to be here tonight or today. You have to bear with me. My mind is still not 100% sharp. Uh, not that it always has been or ever has been. But uh, I may miss a word or mess up a word here or there, but you'll just have to bear with me on that. But it's good to be here, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're here to worship with us this morning. If you have your Bible, and I hope and I pray that you do, turn with me to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. We're going to look at verses 12 through 13. A sermon that I didn't really title, just Christmas Eve AM sermon. But I guess if I had to title this morning's sermon, I would have titled it um, Christmas Hope. Just as I spoke with the kids this morning about hope and what they hope to receive in the morning, uh, we in the church have a lot of hope. And our hope, of course, as we discuss with the children, is Jesus Christ. And that's what this passage is all about here in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. Now, just in case you have been living under a rock, um, today is Christmas Eve. Okay? Um, parents, time's up. <laughs> you have very little time uh, to finish up what you need to finish up. It's hard to believe to me uh, that it's already here. I say that because um, much of last week, or, or the last week and a half, rather, are blurry, and um, not because it's flown by, but because it's blurry in my mind, because I, as uh, Lenora mentioned, have been hospitalized and have been sick, and it's good to be here today. I missed last week, missed worshiping with you guys, but um, I'm glad to be here today. Continue to pray for me. I'm not 100%. Uh, still got a ways to go in my recovery, but I'm definitely not where I was. How many of you are glad you're not where you used to be? I know that I am. And I hope that you are as well. But I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm ready to get back to preaching Job instead of living Job. Um, that's me. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get back to preaching it. Now with that said, we'll get back to the book of Job and finish up our series over the next two weeks. Of which I've been dying to get to um, the good stuff. We've covered all the hard stuff, all the difficult stuff, how Satan attacks. I'm ready to get to the good stuff of where God shows up. I'm glad uh, when God shows up, but He's always there. He's always here. And so we're going to look at over the next couple of weeks how God responds when He lets Satan attack. But I'm glad that God doesn't leave us alone in our suffering. The whole message of Christmas is the fact that God is with us. Emmanuel, and that what the Bible says that he would be called, and because he is with us, we have hope this morning. No matter where you are in life, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what the circumstances are, because of Jesus, you, we have hope. And I want to share for just a moment, not going to take up a lot of time. Just for a moment about that hope. I want to share about that hope. Christmas hope. So let's look. Romans chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. Romans 15, 12 and 13. It says, And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who, uh, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles have hope. Most of us here are probably in that Gentile um, group. Um, if you're not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. And so this passage speaks to us. Verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your blessings. God, what a blessing it is to be here today. God, what, a, what an honor it is to be able to worship you and to sing hallelujah to you. Lord, for it was some 2,000 years ago that you emptied yourself of your glory 
took on a robe of flesh, was born in a lowly manger. Lord, that we might have hope that we as Gentiles may have hope. And so God, I pray that if there's anyone here today who feels as if they're hopeless, as if there is no hope in their life or in their world, God, may they see you today. God, may they experience you today and the hope that you bring. And God, we just pray, Lord, that you're exalted, that you're glorified through this season of Christmas, through this season of celebration. Lord, ma, may we not take it for granted. But God, may we recognize, Lord, who you are and what you have done for us and how glorious it is in all the sights and all the sounds that are around us. Lord, we praise you. We give you thanks. We give you all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I know it doesn't seem like a typical passage of Scripture that most would preach on Christmas, but this passage, especially verse 13, has Christmas written all over it. Now, before we get into that and dissect that, how many of you like Christmas? I figured everybody would raise your hand. How many of you love Christmas? All right. Now, how many of you are Christmas fanatics? Yeah, we got about 12 of you. Right, that's good. I'm not even going to ask. Um, I'm not even going to ask if we have any Scrooges. All right, not going to ask. It's Christmas, right? Um, not going to ask because that just tells me you need to be saved. I'm just being honest. All right, just being honest with you, and you'll understand what I'm saying when I go here. Okay? Um, I know, I know. You're saying, well, I may be a Scrooge, but it's because of the commercialization of Christmas. That's why I'm a Scrooge. <laughs> I'll address that in just a moment. Now, I'm not a Christmas fanatic, so to speak, but I love Christmas. Now, of course, this past week and a half, it's probably debatable whether or not I'm a Christmas fanatic because I've watched more Hallmark movies <laughs> than I have my entire life, but that's all you can do whenever you're bound to a recliner and uh, you know, you're just trying to get into the Christmas spirit the best you can. But anyway... I'm not really much of a fanatic, but I love Christmas. I love the lights. We have the lights on in here this morning. I love the decorations, the poinsettias, the wreaths. Oh, I love the decorations. I, I love the music. I mean, I love Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. I love the Christmas music. As a matter of fact, I have it playing several times throughout the house throughout this week. I love the nativity scenes. You know, if you go into our house, we have a glass table, and we've got about 856 different nativity scenes on that small glass table. <laughs> I don't know how Sonya does it, but she makes it happen every year. Yesterday, she knocked 730 of them off while she was dusting. <laughs> but anyway, I love the nativities. I love Christmas trees. I love Christmas trees. I love um, Santa Claus. I'm not going to say that real loud because um, some of you may not like that. I love elves on and off the shelf. I love that. I love going through Facebook and seeing all these mischievous elves do crazy things. I love that. I think it's great. See, I love Christmas parties, and I've only been able to make it to one, and that was our church-wide Christmas party. Missed every Christmas party this year because of my sickness. But I love Christmas parties. I love Christmas and I love all the things that come along with the celebration. And the reason I love it is because it screams hope. Christmas screams hope. Christmas trees scream hope. Christmas gifts scream hope. The lights, the garland, everything about Christmas screams hope. Children, they hope for that desired gift. Did you hear? The, you didn't get to see their eyes, but when we talk about what they might receive and the hope that they have, it's all over their faces. There is hope in their eyes. There is hope in their life. And so children, they hope for that desired gift. Parents hope for excited and happy kids, right? We're hoping. All right, did we do good? All right, so they're hoping for excited and happy kids. Businesses, they hope to make money this time of year, right? 
Um, employees, they hope for a nice bonus or time off or something. Employees hope for that. Grandparents, maybe you don't have any kids at home. Maybe you're hoping that they'll all at least stop by and see you at Christmas. And so you have that hope as well. The church, we hope that people get saved. You know, at Christmas, because some people only show up at Christmas. And so we hope that because you're here, if this is your first time ever darkening the door of the church, we pray that you get saved. That's our hope, that you experience Jesus and that you come into a saving faith of Him. But I know some of you may be wondering, okay, I get it, the Christmas lights and all this kind of stuff, but where does Jesus fit into all that? Where does Jesus fit in to all this Christmas and sights and sounds of the holidays. Here's where he fits in. Everybody needs hope. When you lose hope, you're done for. Everybody needs hope. Christmas is a season when people are searching for hope. Like Paul at Mars Hill proclaiming who the unknown God was to those who were around him. See, we, through the sights and the sounds of the Christmas season, are able to share Jesus. There are some who celebrate Christmas, who celebrate uh, all things Christmas, but yet don't know Jesus. And so here we have this platform as we celebrate Christmas to share Jesus, whom Christmas is all about, of which Christmas wouldn't even exist without Jesus. And so, instead of looking at the commercialization of Christmas as such a negative, and I get it to a certain point, I know that we talk a lot about the commercialization of Christmas and how it's done this and how it's done that and all this kind of stuff, and I get all of that to a certain point. But here's the thing, it's here, Commercialization of Christmas exists and it's probably going to stay. Okay? So you can gripe about it all you want. You can scrooge about it all you want. But it's here. And it's probably going to stay. So we might as well, as individuals, get into the Christmas spirit and let that hope spill over to all mankind. Now, I'm not saying you need to go all Griswold on your house, okay? I'm not saying that. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you need to wear an ugly sweater, you know, from December 1st all the way to Christmas. I'm not saying that you need to go overboard. Um, what I'm saying is don't be a Scrooge. That's really what I'm saying. Nobody likes a Scrooge. Jesus don't want you to be a Scrooge. Here's the thing, and I'm about to wind up. In order to share the hope of Jesus Christ, hear me, in order to share the hope of Jesus Christ, you must be filled with the hope of Jesus Christ. Look back at verse 13. Now may the God of hope... See, God's the source of all hope, all real hope. God is the source of all hope. So all the hope that we have and experience at Christmas time, guess who the source is? God's the source. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Believing is critical at Christmas. Believing is critical at Christmas. Underline that. <laughs> believing. Because what we're about to do in the Lord's Supper, Supper it's about believing. See, Jesus says to His disciples after He fed the 5,000, those who come back who wanted more food, He says, look, if you, want to, if you want to be a part of my kingdom, if you want to be a part of what I'm doing, then you've got to eat my flesh, you've got to drink my blood. And they're like, wow, that sounds gross, Jesus. <laughs> and it, it, it did sound gross. But here's what He said, you know what? The eating and the drinking was believing. The eating and the drinking is believing. So when we eat the, the bread and we drink the juice, no, we're not physically eating the body of Jesus and physically drinking the blood of Jesus. No, we're not doing that. But what we're doing is we're believing that when we eat that bread, that Jesus, He died upon the cross so that we might be saved. When we eat that bread, we know that His body was broken so that we can be healed. When we drink that juice, we're believing that He shed His blood so that we could have remission of the sins. Because we know that we're sinners. 
And we know that we're unworthy and that Jesus shed His blood that we might have life. And so when we come at Christmas, Christmas is about believing. And when we come to the, the Lord's Supper table, it's about believing that Jesus did what He said He did and accepting Him and His sacrifice. And so let's go back, verse 13. Now may the hope, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. You want hope, you want joy, you want peace, you got to believe. Last part, that you may, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the hardest things to understand and get when it comes to Christmas is, that, is the fact that Christmas is not about you. That's the hardest thing in, in, in to get when it comes to Christmas. This is not about me. It's not about you. It's obviously about Jesus, right? We get that. But it's also about impacting those around us with the hope that is overflowing from us. I want to say that again. <clears throat> It's also about impacting those around us with the hope that is overflowing from us. And so I ask you, are you impacting others with the hope of Jesus Christ that lives within you? See, I decorate my house. I don't decorate it for myself because I don't like getting on the roof and putting lights on. I definitely like getting up and then taking them off. I don't do it for myself. I do it for you. I do it for anybody who wants to come by and see it. I do it so that somebody will see it and smile and enjoy it. We decorate the church. We don't, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for you. We do it so that when you come in, you look and you're, you're happy and you're you know, filled with joy and you're satisfied with the way, the way it looks. We decorate to make people happy. See, we want the spirit of Christmas to be on display for all to see. And here's the thing. This is what I want you to remember. If you remember nothing else I said, the spirit of Christmas is the spirit of God. The spirit of Christmas is the spirit of God. So if you're not in the spirit of Christmas, then it's the spirit of God in you. Okay? I, I get it, man. I know, I know that Christmas is hard. I get that for some people. I understand that. But you know what? Because of Jesus, we have hope even beyond this earth. And we can have hope. No matter what, we can have hope. The Spirit of Christmas is the Spirit of God. And we ought to be alive, or it ought to be alive and vibrant in each of us. So I want to close by reading our scripture again. It says, and again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse... And he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you abound in hope. May others see it. May you overflow with Christmas joy that others might see Jesus in you. Let's, let's have Travis, musicians, come up. And I'm going to pray. And then we're going to spend some time and go into the Lord's Supper. Father, we come to you. We're thankful, Lord, for Christmas. And Lord, sometimes we do lose sight because of all the commercialization, Lord, of what the season really is about. But God, I pray that as we gather here today that you'll turn our attention to Jesus. Lord, that our hope is not in anything that we'll receive as far as gifts go. But all of our hope is in Jesus. And God, everything that we see, Lord, we know, Lord, Lord, it's you. You, you. you give us everything we have. There's nothing we possess, nothing we have that you haven't given us. And Lord, my prayer, Lord, is that people will see you in all of these demonstrations of Christmas celebration. That they might come and they might experience you. My prayer today, Lord, if there's one here today who's never given their life to you, never come and confess their sins, repented of their sins, believed on you, Lord, I pray that today be that day, that day of salvation where they'll come and give their life to you. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.